You're listening to a Frequency Podcast Network production. He's in the building! <laughs> Brink the moment. Brink it. I said, empty your mind. Coquettish and coy. Ow. Ow. What? There's people that are dying. The wickedly talented. More than great. It was historic. Crack is world. Oh, good for you. I have to apologize. One of the hottest. Happy holidays and welcome back to The Reheat, a podcast that re-examines the hottest celebrity news and scandals of yesteryear and asks, how would we react to the same events if they'd transpired today? I'm your co-host, Sarah Sahagian. And I'm Steph Hassan, your other co-host. And in today's episode, while it might not be all that much in the Christmas spirit, we're going to play Scrooge and take a look at the Hallmark movie machine, or dare I say it, Beast. To help Sarah and I dig into this, we are joined by our first ever guests on the show. We have here actor and comedian Rachel Manson, who you might know from her appearances in Amazon Prime's Wayne, or the very hilarious no-name brand commercials. Hi, Rachel. How are you? Oh, I'm great. How are you ladies doing? We're nifty. Amazing. Yeah. And we're also joined by MK Morris, producer, writer, comedian, 10 years of experience in the TV and film industry. She has worked with Disney and her favorite job was assistant to the Baronesses for the final season of CBC's Baroness Von Sketch Show. Damn. Hi, MK. Thanks for joining us. Hi, it's good to be here. Excited to slam some Hallmark movies. Let's do it. They deserve it. They absolutely do. <laughs> now, these are the hilarious women behind High on Hallmark, or comedians getting high and watching Hallmark movies, which is a web series turned sold out monthly show at Toronto's Comedy Bar. Rachel, MK, tell us about yourselves and why Hallmark holiday movies have you by the throat. Oh my God. It is such an unhealthy obsession we both have. It is a real, it is a real love hate, will they, won't they, in terms of mm. if we're going to get mm. uh, a cease and desist by the Hallmark conglomerate. Um, yeah. But yeah, so it was love, but waiting oh, yeah. for that hate. Absolutely. But we, we were, we started as comedy friends. We both worked in the industry and uh, truly just for fun started smoking weed and watching Hallmark movies and then inviting our friends who were all comedians as well. And then we started taping it and it's just been such an accidentally hilariously fun thing to do. I honestly, I think it's, it's so fun. Yeah. It's absurd how much, um, uh, something has, uh, caught fire or sparked interest, both a little bit of weed humor, uh, <laughs> based on this thing that we did solely because, uh, gosh, it's just, they're just so easy to to rip apart, you know, those Hallmark movies. Absolutely. We oh, definitely, absolutely. like, hit a weird nerve, like, a good nerve with people with that we're all secretly watching these, like, very bad, very formulaic made-for-TV movies. And it's, it's such a big cornerstone of culture that we just never really talk about because they're garbage, but also because so many people love it. It's it's wild. And I'm happy uh, other people hate love it as much as we do. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the thing. They're absolute trash. Do I love them? Yes. Have I watched them without even the support of weed? Unfortunately, yes. Yes. What about you, Sarah? How do you feel about Hallmark? Um, In the past, I have not been a big Hallmark person. Like I've I've seen the odd one, um, but it wasn't really something I, I sought out. Um, but in researching this episode, I've watched a bunch and I've discovered that my husband, Brandon, is a big <laughs> fan. Like he likes these movies. Um, Does so not shock he, me. And he also likes the Netflix knockoffs. Like we've watched all three Princess Switch movies in the last three days. See, those are better quality. That they're, makes sense. Oh, that bigger makes budget, sense. better quality. They're better quality and they're like slightly less problematic, like very slightly, oh, but yeah. slightly less. So so um, anyway, I, I get the appeal. Like I get it. It's formulaic. It's comforting. It's like watching a procedural like CSI. Mm -hmm. I watch a lot of true crime and the plot, the setup, it could end up being true crime. You have a single so woman funny. who's often in a small town. She's from the big city. She's traveling. She's alone. She's mm -hmm. usually orphaned. She 
so, you know, she doesn't have a community to look after her. She meets a guy. They have belligerent sexual tension or maybe just a conflict, depending on your perspective on it. Mm. It could go one way or the other. Please describe belligerent sexual tension. I want to know what that is. Belligerent sexual tension. Like, yeah, that was a really great way to phrase it. That was awesome. That's something you can read about on Mm TVTropes.com. So it's very common in movies like this. And it was also common in sort of old Hollywood films, but everything that they did in the 1930s in Hollywood, they seem to do and in 2021 for Hallmark. Mm-hmm. Like, it's the exact same era, according well, to Well, that's Hallmark. because nothing has changed since then in terms of people who are in charge of the money. 100%. Okay, so speaking of the formula, let's break it down because like you said, Sarah, these Hallmark movies, they're almost kind of hard to distinguish from each other because they follow the exact same recipe. So guys, please name some of your favorite elements that go into each of these movies. I will say my favorite, which is the rival person from high school who this woman ends up falling in love with when she goes back to her hometown naturally. Please name some more. The old school hunk who came back and now he's like, you need to come back to small towns because your big city ways are problematic. Um, I will say this. You're telling us they're, they're hard to distinguish. I remember so well, we were in the middle of filming an episode back when we were a web series. And I realized 45 minutes in that I had already seen this movie. <laughs> That's I, how it goes. I've done that, but actually nightmare. watching that. But it's yes. in all of them. And so we, J, MK and I actually created a, it's based on, and this is found online, it is based on the Hallmark drinking game, but we have kind of molded it to the Hallmark smoking game and added our own uh, flavor of love to it. Yeah, there's there's some specifics, especially the Christmas Hallmark, you know, when mm-hmm. anyone is named after a holiday thing. Oh like, my God. Oh, the lead character's name is Noel or the lead guy's name is Chris. Mm-hmm. Or, Holly, you know, Mary. Carol. Yes. Yeah. Noel. Oh, it's all a nightmare. Yeah. Nick. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh Jesus. Yeah. Nick's a big yeah. one. Saint Nick. Yeah. Horrible. Brutal. Yeah. Um, but then there's also other ones like uh, that we've added, which include if you can find a Canadian landmark that they're pretending is New York or Chicago. Yes. Um, yeah. That's a big one. Yeah. If you can tell it's downtown Hamilton, call it out. Take a take a, a drink or a shot or mm-hmm. whatever. It's not Boston. It's Hamilton. Yeah. And then there's the gaslighting hallmark hunk that's like, literally, and we I mentioned before, this. MK and I watched a movie where a man broke into a woman's house in the middle of the night like picked her lock and broke in. And she was like, why, mm-hmm. who, who are you? And he's like, way to be uptight. I'm just fixing your lock. You need to learn to live a little. Mm. And he was the Rachel, hero. you didn't find that romantic? That's I, so romantic. You know what? I did not. <laughs> no, I don't think that. <laughs> I did not, as a matter of fact. <laughs> this is why they're all like two plot twists away from becoming true crime. They all are, right? Like it's like either you fall in love or he murders you. Yep. Yeah. Marriage or murder. You got to pick one. Marriage if it's a marriage, murder, it's Hallmark. If it's a murder, it's way. true crime. It's kind of like Shakespearean, you know, comedy or tragedy. Mm-hmm. If it's if there's a marriage, it's a comedy. If there's like a bunch of death, it's a tragedy. It's the same thing. It's either Hallmark or true crime. That's so real. We've got a pitch for you, Hallmark. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So here's the thing about Hallmark's holiday movies. While they might seem fun and harmless, clearly there is an underbelly to the network. In the last few years, there have been rumblings about bigotry behind the scenes, which makes sense when you know just how whitewashed they all tend to be. And there's countless rumors that the network is not fond of diversity. But then there are the numerous harassment issues actors have slapped on the network and the recent news that Hallmark's former CEO, Bill Abbott, has now created his own very similar network called GAC Family, which has the backing of an investor group that has ties to former U.S. President Donald Trump. No big deal. Now, guys, have you all been following this drama? Did it kind of like shake the way that you look at Hallmark? Um, no, it did not because I could I could have li- I could have said that day one of us watching Hallmark. They are the whitest, most anti-diversity, anti-change. Like this is not a fun, mm. diverse, uh, woke romp that we're having. This is these are very problematic movies in a big way. Yeah, I mean, like you said, nothing's changed since the 1930s. It's, yeah, it's is it shocking that a channel that is funded by mainly white conservative groups mm-hmm. is 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 uh 
not exactly keen to push the envelope no. in terms of cultural change or, you know, representation. Yeah. Their 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 backbone is like they want the, all of their viewership is like Southern American, Middle America, mm -hmm. white, Republican. I want to see gender like gender roles that I know and 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 women not push the envelope and no diversity and God forbid a mixed race uh, couple because that would light the entire industry on fire apparently, but um. Mm. And there's been there's been yeah. rumblings in the background of like uh, extras on set of Hallmark movies who were asked to like change partners in dance scenes because like two black mm -hmm. actors needed to be together and two white actors need to be together. It's it's a bad it's bad news. Yeah, it is. Ugh. Well, okay, so let's dig into a little bit of the history because it's all there. So Hallmark Channel is owned by Crown Media Holdings, and yes, that means they own the Hallmark cards too. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to buy any of those anymore. Now, they've always targeted families and been super wholesome. Like Rachel said, that's kind of been their message for years. In fact, they began as two separate religious cable channels back in the late 80s, and in 1993, they merged to form the Faith and Values Channel, oh. which added a few mm -hmm. secular options options, including cooking and health shows. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. Two years later, it became the Odyssey Network, which chopped 16 daily hours of religious programming to just 10 per day. Now, over the <laughs> next decade, Hallmark Entertainment and the Jim Henson Company came to own massive stakes, and all of a sudden, it all got way more family-oriented with classic sitcoms, kids' shows, series like Gulliver's Travels and The Muppet Show. It was 2000 when the network would debut its very first original holiday movie. And by 2005, ratings proved that it was these holiday movies that pulled in the most viewers for the network. And in 2009, the network began its annual Countdown to Christmas seasonal programming, which everybody knows kicks off the moment Halloween wraps up and runs straight to January 1st. Mm -hmm. Now, in the years since, Hallmark has come to launch its very own subscription service and even a radio channel, because clearly we can't have enough. It is an all-consuming operation. Ladies, did you know just how insanely massive this network is or that it came with religious roots. You know what? I was just about to say yeah. there's not enough Christian radio out there and and that <laughs> and that box needs to be filled. Um, oh, I'm a switchfoot. We're switchfoot. Come on. Where are all those bands? Guys, come on. Where are you? Um no, not unsurprising at all. The 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 Christian value, like the the things that are so evil to Hallmark movies are women with high-powered jobs, always always evil. Uh, like non a threat to non family values, big liberal cities, universities, like yes. these are all bad things. Like the 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 arc of a typical Hallmark movie is leaving those behind to go to a small Christian town with Christian values. So yeah, no, I, I'm surprised Jim Henson was. I mean, I guess I'm not family family oriented. Family yeah, oriented. Was, yeah. You got to go where the money is yeah. to some degree. I get it. Uh, yeah. God damn it. Yeah, that's it's 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 so unsurprising, but it's also like Hallmark is such a con like conglomerate. Like they are a it's it's kind of like Disney where it's like they have this like hold on an entire everyone knows Hallmark movies and everyone knows yeah. and everyone is like unless you're, you know, cool and smart and cultured <laughs> then <laughs> then No, I think you would still I I think if you were cultured, you'd still know they existed. You maybe wouldn't get high yeah. and watch them a bunch, but... Uh, but Should we but stop? You'd, you'd be aware. I don't know. Are we well, cultured? Well, that cracks me nah. up, too. Because would they even appreciate you as dedicated audience members for that reason? Probably not. No, no we are not, not their target kind. audience. We are we definitely are, not their no. target audience. Everything they hate. Uh, literally. Yeah. As a brown person, I'm pretty sure they don't want me watching. <laughs> no, they, they, <laughs> oh my it's God. not that they, they don't want us. you watching. It's that they don't care if you're watching. That's, that's it. Like, well, and that hurts more. Yeah. And that yeah. arguably Ooh. is worse. That's a good way of putting it's, it. They yeah. don't even think about well, me. Oh No, they it's, absolutely exactly. don't. They don't care if you're watching because they're you're not their target audience, so they're not mm. going to cater to what you might like. They're exactly. like not even considering other demographics because exactly. because they have been able to become this huge conglomerate. Humans love a trope, especially like, you know, moms in middle America. They love a trope. There's nothing going on at Christmas, of course. Things things took off. They're like, we can monetize. 
Bada boom, baby, let's do it. White moms in middle America, a true villainy. One thing I like about these, I have to say, after having Please. watched them, one, and I have a friend who is, and I mean, she didn't give me my permission, her permission to give her name out, but she has acted in a bunch of these. And some of her confidential feelings about acting in them is that one thing she likes is that there isn't the same expiration date for actresses. And I appreciate that too, where That's you can be like, it's not like you can be the romantic right. lead and be 60, mm-hmm. but you could be the romantic lead in your late thirties, which for a lot of mainstream romantic comedies, you know, women are basically mm. age out of Hollywood by 35. Look at Kate Hudson. She has to sell yeah. leggings now. Poor Kate. Like, so- she has to. Quote has to. Yeah. Oh. Poor Kate yes, Hudson. These women Suffer. Kate Hudson. Yeah. Tears for Kate Hudson. I don't feel but- bad for her or anything. But, but hey, so that is a good point because these women, like, once you turn 30, you can play Mrs. Claus. That's fantastic news. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it is so no, true. Are, I mean, like, like yeah. Lori Lachlan, who is, you know, uh, in trial right now, possibly. I actually don't know what happened with that court Didn't case. Didn't she go to but jail? Like, I think she went to jail. I'm pretty sure she went to jail. But so a bad, a bad benchmarker for like the progress of Hallmark. But like she was definitely in her like, I think late 30s, early 40s when she was a romantic lead for Hallmark. And that is true. But another Hallmark rule that we have on our smoking list is the age difference between the leads that they don't recognize as Mm, weird. mm, So like mm -hmm. the leading woman could be 25 and the man is 45 and they just never talk about it. So that is a big Hallmark. I do think Hallmark gave me daddy issues. So it makes so much sense. Thanks, Rachel. Hard. Wow. Now let's go. Daddy Christmas. Daddy Christmas. Christmas. (laughs) Coming 2021. (laughs) Back at the start, when the network realized it had a juggernaut on its hands with holiday movies, it turned out one movie a month. So that's 12 a year. Not bad. But by 2008, Mm. it was churning out about 30 movies a year and opened up two additional production companies just to make that happen. This year, the network Mm. gifted the world a whopping 41 movies for the holiday season alone. Now, each one tends to cost anywhere from one to $2.5 million. And by the way, that's pretty low relatively. And they can be shot in just three weeks, which is wild. Now, you both have experience in film, Rachel and MK. And MK, I know you've worked Mm. on some Hallmark productions. Please walk us through this wild process because it seems insane. 100%. And we we should also note that we know because they're all filmed in Canada and they're all filmed in Hamilton, Ottawa, like Halliburton, like they, we know so many people who've worked on these movies and acted in them. And the, you can, we actually can clock like the set budget these movies will have because we can count the amount of speaking parts and you can count the number of locations Mm -hmm. and they'll reuse locations constantly. So Mm -hmm. there'll be like four central locations and then, like, the big city, when they go to the big city, it's one office. Yeah. And they <gasps> yeah. never go, there's an establishing shot, and it's one office. Yeah, yes. that's actually And then they go immediately Hamilton. to the small town. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So it's it's very, we know the ways that they, like, uh, can cut corners in that way, mm-hmm. be, because no one's checking. And that's, the, we just want to see the And also, if you mm-hmm. think about it, this is going to be a boring point, but, uh, but money-wise, <laughs> if you have you know, one production company, say, pumping out four different movies within the course of a summer. So that's four times three, that's 12 weeks of shooting. But if the budget Mm -hmm. for each one of those is two million, you kind of like roll them into each other in a way. Mm -hmm. Uh, So like, you know, you have all of the same Christmas decorations for all of the movies. You have um, not necessarily the same uh, like you wouldn't like block shoot those movies or anything crazy like that. It's not that low budget, but Uh, But you have, you know, certain deals with locations where you're like, okay, I only need two days at this location for this movie, but we're going to need this location for this other movie that we're shooting at the end of the month. So we get a good price on that kind of a thing. So it's really like you're doing you're turbo making four movies in 12 weeks. That's like that's what you're doing rather than making like one movie in three weeks and then one movie in three weeks. So that's another way that they're able to just pump these out. Yeah. Uh, The same gazebo is in six of them. I love that gazebo. Switch this up. (laughs) I want to have a make out at that gazebo. (laughs) Absolutely. Actually, for anyone who's a Toronto local, one of those gazebos that they like to use if they have a bigger budget and can film in Toronto is in the junction. Oh. There's a gazebo there and they cover it with snow. And they've done it like four times. I love this. Now, okay, so 41 movies, 
It does sound like a lot, but listen, the numbers justify it. Each year, around 50 million viewers watch at least part of one of their holiday movies. And their key demo for the longest time has been women between the ages of 25 to 54. Now that's all of us. The yep. network is almost that's always us. Yeah, the network is almost <laughs> always in first or second place when it comes to winter ratings. That's pretty wild. And it pulls in big money, big, 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 with their Christmas programming accounting for one third of the entire company annual ad revenue. And according to Adweek, in one year, they can earn about, please sit down if you're not, $390 million. Whoa. And that does not account for licensing or streaming. And here's the wildest part of this all. Hallmark is one of the rare networks to maintain and grow viewers year by year. Like, that's wild. In 2021, most primetime series lose viewers by the year, but not Countdown to Christmas. And here's a little bit more about that demo. Although Hallmark likes to say it's apolitical, it very huh. much isn't. Because when huh. we examine who's watching, and that's a largely political conservative base in suburban and rural areas, uh -huh. who, according to Manhattan Institute for Policy Research via the LA Times— feel the network and its original programming feed their desire to, quote, express traditional family values and also to steer away from political themes and stories that denigrate religion, end quote. Now that phrase, family values, is a big one, not only for conservatives, but for Hallmark's entire holiday movie branding. Or you might often hear family-oriented, mm. pretty much the same. When you all hear that phrase, please tell me what comes to mind. Christian. Family oriented and family values is code word for Christian. Absolutely. Always. Yeah. I have never seen a Hanukkah movie. I've never seen a Hanukkah movie, period, because they don't exist. And don't get me started when when my my family tried to sit down and watch the Hallmark version of the Hanukkah movie that was just about a Christian woman celebrating Christmas and hiring a Jew to play a Christian. That was oh. their Hanukkah movie. Oh, oh yeah. They know their diversity real good. <laughs> um but it's it's so like family values is not used anywhere else other than to describe Christian values. Well, especially mm -hmm. because what kind of I mean, this is a bit of a thought exercise, but what kind of family are you referring to? You know, are you referring mm -hmm. to a yeah. middle class Christian, probably white, mm -hmm. straight family? Yep. Are those the family yeah. values? It's also a certain type of Christianity. So as somebody yes. who was, I was raised Anglican, and that's a pretty progressive sect. I mean, we've yes. had gay marriage for a while. Women have been able to be ministers um, for a very long time. It's I, I, it's not perfect by any means, but it, it mm -hmm. its values are a lot different than certain sects of Christianity. And so when I watch this and I see kind of the the way Christianity is represented here, it's very foreign to me. Right. It's this very straight, heteronormative, like oh, well, heteronormative straight mean the same thing, but this very <laughs> heteronormative, um, culturally conservative way of dating. Like, I mean, the people don't even really kiss. And I remember one nope. my Anglican minister telling me about his one night stands when he was younger, <laughs> right? Like, and just like oh, just your church sounds dope <laughs> as hell. I wanna go there. Yeah, That's I mean it's Awesome. It's a lot different from this type of Christianity. Like, it's a lot more, okay, I don't want it to sound too judgmental, but in my opinion, it's a lot more fun. Like, it's not as sexless and That's fair. weird as, as sexless and bigoted. Uh, so it, it is interesting that it's this very culturally specific network for a very certain type of person. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, a thousand percent. I want to be clear. I don't want to like, I just realized I was probably sounding very Christian bashy. But what what I mean is it's a very um, conservative evangelical yeah. pop Christianity. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Which is which is the kind of vibe I think they're yeah, going for. Absolutely. It's the kind of like, pure flicks, uh, God's Not Dead movie kind yeah. of oh, God, mm -hmm. yes. Christianity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Christian mingle. Oh. Greg Kinnear should be in one of these movies one day. Where's Greg Kinnear at? Greg oh. Kinnear, Lacey Chabert. We got the list. Like, <laughs> yes. it's... Oof. Is Greg Kinnear conservative? Sorry, this is a weird aside. He I must didn't know that be. Better. I don't know. I, let's not make assumptions, allegedly, but he has been in so many of those Christian movies. Has he? Wait, has he? You know what? Yeah. As I would not Jennifer be surprised. Garner. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jennifer Garner? What are you talking about? What Christian movies did Jennifer Garner played a, That's her new thing. She plays Christian moms now. Right. <laughs> it's devastating. Oh, my God. I hate Hollywood. She adorably bakes a lot of good things in her kitchen, though, on Instagram. And that's what I think Jennifer yeah. Garner is excelling now. Mm. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, my and the, the thing is, like, I do understand why sometimes these are the only jobs they can get. Like, Jennifer Garner does not need the money, so that's not an excuse yeah. for her. But an actress like Sarah Drew, who kind of aged out of mainstream TV, like, she was fired from Grey's Anatomy, and, like, she was raised Presbyterian. She's not a particularly conservative Christian. Like, she's pretty progressive. But they hire right. her because she, they know that... Some aspects of who she is, like the fact that she's white, the fact that she goes to church, Mm -hmm. the fact that she's conventionally pretty, will appeal Mm -hmm. to this demographic so she, in her 40s, can still get work. And, I mean, I I get why some of them, even if they don't necessarily like the values, might take these jobs. Oh, 100%. MKs worked for them. Like, if if I had a Hallmark face, give me their money. Like, I (laughs) I, no judgment for anyone working in the Hallmark umbrella. Our industry is hard and it's dumb and take their money. Yeah, exactly. Take their their money. I mean, 30 years, I'll be a perfect Mrs. Claus. I've been described jolly year-round my entire life. So... (laughs) Like, yeah, I would, I mean, oh my God. Yeah, a Wild. job is a job. You got to work. And especially for, like you said, a lot of, a lot of people who do age out of the industry, they do still have these roles available. Mm-hmm. Take them. Work is work. Okay. So let's go back to that family values phrase a little bit. sort of what we've been talking about. Here's where that messaging gets really messy. Not mm. as if it isn't enough. In order to appear apolitical and to project so-called family values, these movies, like we've said, they lack so much depth. They're sexless. Mm. A couple will share like one chaste kiss under that gazebo mm-hmm. at one point, And that's about all we at get. At the end. Yeah. Or at the end. Sorry, my bad. I jumped ahead. No, and they end, and they tend to end with some heavy duty Seventh Heaven esque moralizing almost all the time. They're exceedingly white, straight. There's very rare LGBT cast members or actors of color. Mm -hmm. So the idea seems to be that this sort of lens is way more accessible for all that. And of course, is problematic as hell because I certainly don't watch Hallmark movies and see myself kissing my enemy under the tree and falling in love because I'm not white. And you're not in a cult. so, oh, thank God. Well, yeah. you in know, a Christmas cult. As far as you no. guys know, a Christmas cult I sounds mean, so sweet. <laughs> and yet, no. <laughs> no Hot thanks. chocolate all year round, gingerbread. I don't know. If I were going to join a cult, You'd get a lot of presents. I'd join the Christmas. Oh, that's so sweet. (laughs) So back in June 2020, when the Black Lives Matter movement resurged, Hallmark released a statement. Again, please be sitting down. Here's what it said. Quote. Oh, no. They released a statement. Of course they did. Of course they did. Here's how it went. Quote. We are heartbroken for our Black employees, customers, and communities who find themselves in danger for simply being who they are. We stand with you in the fight against racism and injustice, and we believe we must all care care enough to do better, end quote. Hearing that is rough, to put it simply, Mm -hmm. because it had so many of us wondering which Black employees exactly. Now, literally, I was, I'm going to throw my laptop out the window. Like, all of our, you know, that's, that's the equivalent of an older white woman being like, I have a Black friend. Like, shut up. No, you don't. Um, also, that, what was that last sentence? We believe... Something like we believe we must care. We enough. believe we must all care enough to do better. Okay, we so believe they believe that. that they have to care enough <laughs> to do better. They just don't care enough to actually do better. They're n- we don't actually right. care enough to do better. We believe we probably should. Yeah. Also, mm-hmm. sorry to just for being who they are. When was the last time you were cool with people being who they are? I haven't seen any other Never. like. Every not only is every story in Hallmark about how you should change for love. Yeah, it <laughs> but is. like. There's no gay characters. There's like, there's no like people being who they, sh- shut up. Shut mm. up, Hallmark. I co signed that. We all co signed that. Now, but that statement, it went viral on Twitter and it had people calling for more diverse casting, obviously. Mm-hmm. But things hit a fever pitch when a Vancouver casting director, Chris Woznensky, replied to the statement, writing, quote, I've cast multiple projects for Hallmark. Last time we worked for them, no interracial couples were allowed. Now, she was far from the only one. Many other actors and directors made similar claims. Another person said, Why did the creative notes for Black actors be noted as less? hood do better. A lot of companies made oh. statements like the one Hallmark did during BLM, and a lot of them were similarly tone deaf. But what do you all make of it when you hear those words? What are they trying to accomplish exactly? They're honestly, they're. it's so clearly just like, it's like a bank at Pride Parade. It's just mm-hmm. fucking lip service, yeah. just trying to get like the, they just don't want to be called out. And then arguably by making a comment, like, 
made it so much worse because everyone knows how white and horribly racist Hallmark is. Like, they've done every, like, oh, be less hood. Like, that's so, and and it's, and it's what we were t- touching on before where when they do have a POC as a central character, which, by the way, is almost never paired with a white character. Yeah. But when they do, it is a it is a whitewashed person. They have to speak in a very certain way. They have to carry themselves in a very certain way. They have to, it's it's just, it's so disappointing, but it's also so unsurprising. The response or the the statement, it's not only tone deaf, it's entirely like completely unaware of self. Like they yeah. They are problematic and they don't seem to see anything wrong with that. And they, they also don't yeah. see the ways in which they are problematic. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. completely unaware. Yeah. I mean, I watched a, a film recently. It's called The Christmas Ring. Mm. Um, of course it is. A Toronto actress I like. Um, I like her a lot. Her name is Nazim Contractor. Um, and she is, according to her IMDb, she was born in... in um, India, and then um, came to Canada with her family, and she's a ac- very accomplished theater actress in particular. Amazing. Um, but the writing was really weird because, like, it was an interracial couple. She ends up with a white guy who looks like he could be The Bachelor, but her name is Kendra Adams. So I'm like, did they cast her as a white character? Like, is she supposed to be playing a white person? I'm very confused about what's happening here. So, I mean, there is this kind of, even when they have diversity, they present it in a, like, literally as a white It's a white presenting kind of character. And and, and that's a lot to do with, like, okay, well, what was that person's family like where they talked about in the film? Was there anything that was... you know, accurate or, or telling of, you know, uh, of culture, of their experience? Or was it just, we've cast someone who's not white, yay for us. Uh, you know, we've, we've paid someone who's, who's not a white person. Yes, the character is definitely meant for a white person, but we've put money in the right spot. Mm-hmm. There you go. That is the Hallmark accent right there. But we've done it. Yeah. Just oh my God, it so yeah. is. yeah. I mean, I found in this particular movie, it was like the racist white person's fantasy of what a BIPOC person would be oh. because she loved yes. Christmas. She was obsessed with Christmas, right? Like it was just so into white Christian values and mm-hmm. loved this small town where literally everybody else was white. So, I mean, it it's very problematic and icky because it's you can see somebody in Alabama being like, if only all BIPOC people were like this lady, right? Like it's this racist fantasy of diversity. It's so gross. Not just the characters, but I mean, even the actors, they're usually one eighth ethnic, you know, half white. One thousand percent. Yeah, it just scratches the Mm -hmm. itch a little bit. Yeah. And even when they're in, when there is a BIPOC person in a supporting role, like even as like the, you know, the, the, Piano teacher of the choir, where she's a. T- where we just watched the Kristen Chenoweth one, where the only BIPOC person was the piano teacher. Oh, I've seen that one. Um, yes. A million, one of the big budget ones too. They had multiple locations. <laughs> that's how you know. Um, but that's how you. And Kristen, Kristen Chenoweth, Chenoweth, she's a. You gotta pay. A, you gotta yeah, pay you a pretty pay penny to get well. her. You yeah. do. You do. Oh yeah, she's you, for Glinda. Come now, um, <laughs> but it's very much like. If there if there is like a visibly like you know black character or Middle Eastern character, they can't have names like Hassan or Ali. Like it's always mm-hmm. like Adam, Jeff, Chris, Chad, Jake, Josh, Mark, Matt. Everyone is a Chad. Everyone in the Hallmark Everyone movie has is a, a brown man name. named Chad mm. or Gary. <laughs> It's a lot to digest. Whoa. Now, MK, what I think is so interesting about you is you've got Hallmark experience. And mm-hmm. I'm curious what that process has been like for you and if you sort of hit into any barriers like these yeah. or noticed them happen. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I've been working in the industry, industry for like a decade. So it's a very like spaced out experience. Um, I actually started uh, working at a production company that primarily makes their money off of Hallmark films. So... Um, so I was, you know, doing like treatment writing and finding out about those and, you know, like researching those stats, uh, that you're pulling up of like engagement. Mm -hmm. 
uh, worked a little bit in, in ca- accounting, so found like the money aspect. Um, but even like, even working on stuff, uh, yeah, it was just very like, oh yeah, this is schmaltz. This is, this is like the Christian value mm-hmm. family, like faith-based. And we'd have to develop a whole bunch of different kinds of projects too. So we'd have like Hallmark specific Christmas. We'd have faith-based. We'd have, uh, like lifetime thriller, um, and each oh my god lifetime yeah thriller. and each my network, dad loves those yeah yeah each network has yum, 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 things yum. that you have to hit certain yeah certain I don't know touchstone moments certain uh, mm-hmm. yeah qualities like the whole yeah like the characters have to be the main characters have to be white that's just a thing that you have to write when writing for Hallmark and that's the thing is like follow the money right so if if the people who are paying if the people who are running hallmark are contracting these production companies to make them content then the head of those production companies have to answer to hallmark so the head of the production companies will then give you know notes to their development team and then the development team working with the writers are going to give them notes based on that so even when you're writing which i've written a few things that have not gotten made, but they've been, you know, optioned or they're lost in development hell. Um, and sometimes notes are ridiculous. Like they're, it'll be, this <laughs> This has nothing to do with, um, uh, I guess, social change stuff, but like you'll, you'll get a note that's like, okay, so we really liked this movie about them coming back and renovating the cafe but can we can make it like just not a renovation story so it's like okay cool no worries we have some some completely (laughs) other reason for it not being a renovation story we'll we'll go back a week later here's our different version they're like great so that person that gave you that note is no longer working for this company so we're gonna go back to your original idea we're like okay great so we'll go back to that and they're like but here's some Mm -hmm. other things or like hey we need to make this one more canadian because we're applying for a grant so can you make the pilot french canadian um and like a (laughs) moose doctor um it's like it's so (laughs) ridiculous like i've gotten the note either make it more very yeah make it more or like like uh i had a friend who was writing something and they had a character like the best friend character who was gay and it was like okay they got the note that he can't actually be gay and then it was like okay he's just going to be mm, like peppy and they were like yeah that's fine it was like oh my gosh like it was just like trying to infuse any sort of diversity into Mm -hmm. movies is so hard when all of the Mm -hmm. notes are coming from the people with money and those people those gatekeepers are making the decisions and of course like you know if you are working on that kind of a show you're you're working you're making money you're doing the a job that you're paid to do so, like, you can't really be like, mm-hmm. excuse me, I'm going to call the president of Hallmark and tell him I want a, a queer character in my script because you're just not going to sell that screenplay to Hallmark. You just won't. Which I think yeah. is such a great note. It's clearly top down. And let's get into that a little bit more. So in December 2019, and I'm sure a lot of you heard about this, six ads from wedding planning site Zola appeared on the Hallmark channel, and they included same-sex couples, Mm. particularly two brides kissing at the altar. Conservative watchdog group One Million Moms beasts that they are quickly caught on to them and snapped. one million moms yeah what is more terrifying huh. than that image I, I could i couldn't even hold that in my, i was like let her finish her sentence i was like fuck one million you're, moms i hate them i hate them i hate them you're right on and so they caught on and they snapped they demanded hallmark remove them the company released a statement saying because they didn't want to be quote divisive they'd be removing the ads. So yet again, the network was getting blasted in the media. Two days after the ads were pulled, the network reversed course and Hallmark CEO Mike Perry issued a public apology for the, quote, wrong decision via the New York Times, adding, quote, our mission is rooted in helping all people connect, celebrate traditions, and be inspired to capture meaningful moments in their lives. Anything that detracts from this purpose is not who we are, end quote. Hallmark then committed to work with GLAAD and touted its 
diversity and inclusion as a, quote, progressive pioneer on television for decades. Now, at the time, One Tree Hill actress Hillary Burton, who has appeared in several Hallmark movies, revealed on Twitter that she had quit doing them after she made a formal request to executives asking if they could add an LGBT character, an interracial couple, or any kind of diversity, and they didn't bother to do it. Um, So, guys, what do you all make of Hallmark's desperation to not be divisive? Because one thing that we should note is that when movies and TV shows are more diverse, they actually pull in a lot of money and a lot of viewers. But, and MK noted this earlier, if your audience is also really white and conservative, there's also money in that if you're targeting that. Mm -hmm. Because I think the GLAD Mm -hmm. partnership reads is bullshit, no? Oh, yeah. Completely. That's like, let's not rock the boat. We need to satisfy... (sighs) Yeah, we need to satisfy our naysayers without rocking the boat of our stable base of supporters and where the majority yeah. of our money comes from. But that's also why, Absolutely. like you said, when, when there are more diverse storylines and representation, that's where I think we'll start getting a lot from Netflix and hopefully other streaming services where they do play on these these tropes and these formulas, but they have that extra element. They're not being funded by necessarily faith-based groups mm-hmm. and they, they have that little bit of wiggle room. But with Hallmark- 100%. It's money. Not it's, enough. Yeah. And, and even more than that. And it's, it, you gotta like, obviously everything they do, like working with glad fucking again, lip service, but it's so interesting, the language that they use because they say divisive, it would be divisive to show just, just, just to have on screen a, a gay couple. Like yeah. they're, they're not pushing any sort of political agenda. It's, this is, this is someone, this is a, this is a a right-wing conglomerate that has categorized someone's humanity as divisive. They're not pushing any sort of political agenda. They're not pushing any sort of opinion. It's just showing someone that exists in the world would be too divisive. It would be divisive to show that someone who is gay or a person of color exists. simply exists. Yeah, that's... Uh, exactly. So it's it's not... It, they're already showing their cards with the language that they've been using. Like, they're not making... They're, they're not even making it much of a secret. It's... it's um, yeah, they're not cool. Not cool mm-hmm. people. Not I. You, you didn't convince me with the glad shit. Uh-uh. Yeah. No, and just as a personal note to One Million Moms, it is not a television network's job to parent your mm. children. That's your job. And if you're doing it right, you're showing your kids that people who are not white exist. And queer people exist. It's insi- like, I think, I, and I gotta, I gotta double check this before I say it, but I'm pretty sure One Million Moms also had a problem with Brendan Urie of Panic at the Disco back in the day. Just because he's like, you know, like pr- promotes Satanism and such. But I want I want my kids to have the gays and panic at the disco. I, I, you're sorry, one million moms, your kids are dull. Yes. Your kids are dull. Don't care. Exactly. Have flavor, have seasoning, please, for Ugh. God's sake. And it's so bad. <laughs> it is. Now, in a telltale sign, one month after pulling these ads, Hallmark Channel CEO Bill Abbott resigned. This is the guy who, in his 11 years at the company, helped grow the network and brand into what it is today, love it or hate it. And that's a massive moneymaker. So no reason was given when he resigned, but I think we all know it's pretty clear why he did. So the following Christmas, Hallmark debuted two holiday movies that were their first to feature same-sex couples. This was without Bill around. Now, that might seem like progress, but last year's 40 movie slate included one with the same-sex couple, while several more featured leads of color. But here's the bigger move. After Bill Abbott left, the network hired Wanya Lucas, a Black woman, to replace him in the Mm. summer of 2020. That's when the slate actually began to shift a little. So we had Holly Robinson Pete, who starred in two Hallmark holiday movies, and she was a big fan of Wanya's hiring, talked about it a lot. Then we had an actor from Mean Girls, Jonathan Bennett. He said he grew emotional when he learned he would be one half of the network's first same-sex couple to lead a holiday movie. He said, quote, to USA Today, yes. everyone on the crew was crying and there oh. were some members of the crew that were gay that came up to us and said, thank you for doing this. You have no idea what this means for us to be a part of the crew that works on the Hallmark movies constantly and to have this happen and to get mm. to be a part of it makes us feel so honored and so special. End quote. Now, 
we kind of talked about this already, but do we feel like this is actual progress, seeing a little bit of this? I think the tough part for me is it also still feels like we're scratching an itch by putting in one movie with one character oh, yeah. who is of yeah. color and maybe one with a gay couple. Oh yeah, Hallmark's yeah. not coming out with like the L word. Like they're they're not they're yeah. not going no. any further than they need <laughs> yeah. to go. I, as a practice and as a like belief, anyone who's like a rich exec or like a massive production, I, I like I, a big company. I'm not going to trust what they, I don't trust them to do much more than that. It's all, but it is great. Like just to show that you know, I mean, it's so the bar is so low just to show that queer people exist and. Like, yeah. yeah. And I mean, it's obvious that representation matters. Like mm-hmm. the fact that, yeah, all of those crews who have to work on all of these things that just right. see, like, you know, you shoot three heteronormative things in a row and you're, you're, yeah, it's just, it's mm-hmm. a lot. Um, so is it more lip service? Maybe. <laughs> but the fact that someone is in charge, who is a woman of color is a really nice mm-hmm. thing. It's nice that once that happened, there was actual evidence in the content that was being produced. Even if it's tiny, baby, itty bitty toe movements of progress, I would say that is progress. And I'm tentatively optimistic that things will move slowly in a direction where there is maybe mildly more diversity. It's definitely it's good at the end of the day. It is, yeah. because I think a lot of the criticism of move like hiring Wanya Getz is it's similar to affirmative action yeah. where it's really just about lip service. But you know what? At the end of the day, whatever we're doing to get those people in those roles is great because they're mm-hmm. in those roles totally. and that's going to yeah. get the ball rolling. And that's a great thing. Yeah, exactly. It's better than having, you know, some old white man in charge yeah, again. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like anything yeah. is better. Anything's better than having a mediocre middle-aged white man just, you know, Oh my God, just yeah. be like two women kissing on my screen. What's <laughs> next? Uh, we're just going to show Man. cats fucking whales. I'm like, why do you jump to that? That's so weird. But that also sounds awesome and washable. Yeah, honestly, I'd, I'd, I'd watch it. If a cat and a whale genuinely fell in love <laughs> and there was consent, I would watch oh. that too. That sounds adorable. Oh, like that freaking prude. Story. I'd watch it. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Pixar. Have we got a pitch for you? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Catfish. <laughs> when it comes to situations like this, <laughs> Hallmark is not That's going awesome. anywhere. Like, it's it's not. Yeah. It's not going anywhere. Uh, so, even though the pace of progress is much slower than I think any of us Wanted would like. To be. Yeah. At, we have to, like, I, I'm glad that there is some because it's not like it's not going to exist five years from now. It's so overwhelmingly popular. So the pace of change would be yeah. great if it were faster, but it is nice and gratifying to see that their that their leadership is changing and that there is, as, as we mentioned, some actual evidence that the content is changing a little bit. There will always probably be problems with this because their mm-hmm. base doesn't seem to want to evolve. Like yeah. one thing that I've noticed is that from this lineup, it would be very easy if you did not want to watch a gay couple fall in love, or if you did not want to watch uh, racialized people fall in love, it would be very easy if you were a like a white supremacist homophobe in middle <laughs> America just to opt out and you'd still have a ton of Hallmark movies, mm-hmm. right? Like you yeah. are not like, that's the thing. They still have a ton of selection, um, and so it's a, a victory if you want to seek out the gay couple falling in love. You have that option. You can watch that, but they aren't really challenging their audience that much. They can just like yeah. go out that night and not stay home and watch and do night. their white suprem white supremacist groups haven't been much for opting out in the past. They're pretty down to <laughs> get their nails in some mm-hmm. in some agendas. But um, yeah, at the yes. end of the day, it's it's obviously a good thing. Yeah. No, but I don't want to fault their leadership at all because, like, listen, no. she's doing way more than anyone oh God, else yeah. that Hallmark has ever done. Of and course, of I, course. But yeah. it, but it is yeah. we're not at the stage yet where they are challenging their audience, and that would be nice no. to see in the next ten years. Like they're at them yeah. actually, yeah. But again, she's doing her job. Her job is yeah, maintaining yeah. the bottom line. So it'll be interesting to see, like you said, pace of change, like. Mm-hmm. Last year was it that we had like two movies with with mild diversity? Uh, so it'll be yeah. interesting mm-hmm. to see yeah. this year. Like, is yeah. there two again? Is there three? How? Yeah, yeah. 
like what kind of we've got a yeah, few this so, year we've got a few oh, yeah. yeah so it'll be interesting to see what comes in the years and, and what change she's actually able to enact yeah. while still maintaining mm-hmm. the, the bottom line and if yeah. they're able to do an interracial couple where they actually admit that it's an interracial couple yeah i mean like when i was watching that movie with my husband my husband and i are an interracial couple and we're just sort of like mm-hmm. this is so weird because on one level like hallmark is boring into like a relationship that we actually have but on another level they are pretending that this is not what it is <laughs> so it's mm-hmm. it's weird it's like is this representation helping or it's just making me feel like the type of relationship that we're in if you want to be accepted it has to be almost like a dirty secret like we don't talk about it like we don't <laughs> talk about the fact that we're interracial yeah. we just pretend totally. it's not true uh, because that was very much the representation that we saw in the christmas ring mm. um and it would be nice if like you could actually write into the storylines that people come from different backgrounds and talk about what that means and how you can fall in love with people who are different from you and learn about their culture and care about their traditions and they can care about your traditions. Anyway, it would, mm-hmm. I, maybe I'm asking for too much, but I actually <laughs> felt really icky watching an interracial couple where they were almost, where they were kind of presenting, no, not kind of, they were presenting the person who was racialized as white. So it was this, Mm. Rep- simultaneous representation and erasure. Yeah, and the fact that you have that experience and you have had that that feeling of like you said ickiness while watching that is yeah that that leans towards erasure rather than representation. A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen. Now that we've discussed white supremacy, sharks and cats fucking <laughs> dead at Christmas, love it. Let's take a quick little break. We will be right back. So we've got these new, more diverse actors being hired in. We talked a little bit about it. And it's very sparse, but it's happening. The majority is still so white, so bland, so plain. Mm. I'm talking Lacey Chabert, Jessica Lowndes, Chad Michael Murray, my personal favorite. I'm so sorry. Jesse Metcalf, a long list of harmless, pretty white actors with very white teeth (laughs) who often populate the casting of the shows. But what about the more questionable ones? We touched on this a bit earlier, but there's Full House's Lori Laughlin, Mm. who was a one beloved Hallmark regular who started the network series When Calls the Heart. Oh my God. She shockingly lost her contract with the network in 2019 after the U.S. college admission scandal that saw her and her husband accused of paying $500,000 in bribes so their two daughters could gain admission into prestige colleges. Mm. Please look into that Varsity if you don't know Varsity Blue, it. baby. Now, Watch it on Netflix. Varsity it's all Blue. there. And also kind of primed to be its own Hallmark movie. Yeah. It should be 100%. a Hallmark movie. Lifetime. It should be. I feel like it's perfect for Oh, yes. Lifetime. Lifetime Lifetime would be all over it. All over it. Now, they both pleaded not guilty. She was fined and sentenced to two months in prison, and he got five months. They Both of sentences which they served. It was a rare moment, though, where Hallmark actually acted really fast and did mm-hmm. something. They said they were, quote, saddened by the news and went as far as replacing her character and editing her out of episodes that had already been shot. Um, now, what's interesting is wow. we've got another Full House co-star who's a b- big um, Hallmark regular. That's Candace Cameron oh, Moore, yeah. who previously came under fire for expressing anti-LGBTQ views after in 2015, she sided with Christian bakers who refused to make a wedding cake for a gay couple. This was a huge Mm -hmm. thing on Twitter at the Mm -hmm. time. And then there's also the horde of anti-vaxxers who Hallmark loves to cast. Mm -hmm. So how can we look at this? Is this Hallmark's views? If they're sort of kind of quietly backing up their casting and not removing them, what does it mean? How do we process that? I don't think Hallmark has an opinion other than this is what our viewers believe, so we don't care yeah. to denounce it. That's it. It's like yeah. we have so it, it does they those don't show repercussions in their viewership. If they if they let an anti vax or white lady fuckhead idiot through the door, uh that their viewers love. Uh like I don't know. I feel like Cameron would have to like punch someone in the face on the street on videotape and then maybe 
and then get and arrested. And then scream, Maybe. Satan's great. Maybe. And then. And then scream, yeah. I love Satan so much. <laughs> yeah. And then, then they'd be all over You'd it. have to go against their yeah. own views. Yeah, literally. Yeah, turn the tables and go against their 100%. Yeah, that's true. It, it, they, they would have to go yeah. so far to not be cast by Hallmark. But yeah, it just, it doesn't go against their viewership. So like the, the anti-vaxxer no. is still under the Christian umbrella of, mm-hmm. the, of this like yep. pop white, uh, influencer mom vibe. So logistically, I'm wondering how they're able to like to they film. Have, well, yeah, because like they can. That's interesting. Legally, film with someone who's unvaccinated, right? I mean, not here anyway. I mean, That's I've worked point. with an anti-vaxer, but that was huh. before vaccines existed. So mm-hmm. that was like its own struggle. Yeah, it's also like most of these rich Republican fuckheads will like say all this anti- anti-vaxxer stuff and yeah. get vaccinated. Like, they have, they're, like, Trump's fully vaxxed. Like, that's a good point. Especially if you offered that, like, I mean, Candace Cameron Bure makes a lot of money from Hallmark if they say, like, oh, listen, you've got to be vaccinated, yes. but here's, like, this big check. I am I don't think that her anti-vaccination stance is as principled as maybe her fans think. No. So I think that's a million. I would agree with that. Just didn't recently... Ice Cube lose a movie deal because he refused to get vaccinated. Wasn't that a thing? Like, I'm pretty sure principle. it's illegal like, for people to. Principle. Yeah, I'm yeah. looking that up. I Quite love Ice people. Cube. Damn it! I know, but you know what? Oh, as much I'm, as I so want devastating. people to get vaccinated, at least he's not like publicly anti-vax and then privately getting vaccinated. Like I, I, do I guess have some respect that he that he can't be bought. That's how bar- low the bar is now. <laughs> How low? Once you get past a certain income bracket, I don't trust you. It's That's just, true. It's a simple. Yeah, as same. That. And you know, it's interesting too because a lot of soap actors have had the same mm. stance recently and been fired in quick succession. And soaps are not that different from Hallmark when we look at who Very the casting similar. is and also who the viewers are. So there you go. These guys are kind of lying down low, and they're there. They're really in those shows that you yeah. love. Now, if we've learned anything at this point, it's that Hallmark is always bursting with drama. So here is the latest development. After leaving Hallmark, Bill Abbott got a little feisty and this past summer decided to start his very own network called GAC Family. Hard not to say GAC Family, but that's GAC Family. Even worse. We're GACing that, for you. GAC Family. Now that stands for, you'll love this, Great American Country. If you're not Ooh. familiar with that, it's practically indistinguishable from Hallmark, even pelting out words like family-friendly on just about Ugh. every press release. The new network is even broadcasting its own original holiday movie slate, none of which star LGBT actors, and of the 12 that they've dropped, one features a person of color. One. Now, to make this a real all-out war, Abbott has been poaching in Hallmark's longtime favorites, including Danica McKellar and Trevor Donovan, both of whom have decided to be exclusive to GAC. Lori, too, hilariously enough, has found a place there, oh, wow. reprising her role in a When Calls the Heart spinoff. So one critic who I I loved this comment naturally referred to GAC as a, quote, sanctuary for bigots. Yeah. I think that's really Accurate. it. Yeah. For not being into a safe space, for not being into a safe space, they're pretty uh, down to give bigots a safe space. Yeah. Well, I'm just gonna, it's hard not to see it as a safe haven for those running toward it, knowing its upcoming slate isn't even remotely progressive. GAC, by the way, is backed by Hicks Equity, the family business of a Republican National Committee co-chairman and friend of Donald Trump Jr. This man's name is Thomas Hicks Jr. I'm so shocked. I'm so surprised. I'm sorry. Did you say... Did you say they're called Hicks? Hicks? The Equity? jokes write themselves, guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no. they do. Mother of God. It's too Come on, on the nose. I know. This sounds like like a giant like dick swinging competition of like a man who was like, I had to leave because I wanted to do things the old fashioned way. Well, now I'm going to do things the old fashioned way with awful people like myself. <laughs> so there. No one's a bigger baby than a disgruntled old white man. Fucking like snowflake. Yeah, well, so they're calling their slate the Great American Christmas. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. These up. are the same people no. who got mad when Starbucks got rid of its Christmas cups because that's a war on yes. Christmas. Christianity yeah. for you Correct. is synonymous with capitalism, which makes no sense because if you actually freaking read the Bible, Jesus was a hardcore socialist. Thank you, Sarah. They don't. They don't. They have. They don't follow the... 
this is so bad. I literally just watched the South. <laughs> I don't want to plug South Park, but the, I just watched a South Park episode where they make fun of Mel Gibson and the Passion of the Christ. And it's just like, they don't follow, they had such a good line, which I won't attribute to South Park a lot, but they had a really good line that was like, you're none of them are actually following Christian values or no. what Jesus said. They're following no. how how Jesus died. And like, also like using that as a sort of like, stereotypy, horrible, bigotry, violent way of looking yeah. at capitalism, which I don't like. No, I mean, Christianity, mo- the, the issue is a lot of Christianity has been disseminated through this kind of conservative culture and yeah. people aren't necessarily reading the text, right? They're not actually reading the Bible or they're seriously picking and choosing because you have to really pick and choose not to get the message where Jesus is like, you should not judge people because love thy like, neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. And you should love people. And also we should share wealth and we should not have the society where only a few people have enough to eat. Like you have to really, really be trying not to get the real yeah. message of the Bible, which is true. A lot of these people are trying not well, to I get it. Well, I think Sarah, yeah. to some yeah. degree, they think they are biblical and they are the Bible for modern viewers because here's yeah. their mission to quote, yeah. deliver on the promise of safe and entertaining storytelling. And I think we we all know what they mean by safe. But guys, I have one question for you. And that is, why the hell do you think there are actors who've been working for Hallmark for so long, have got a very steady paycheck? Why are they suddenly jumping ship to GAC family? How, what can we, what's that say about them? Uh, that they were bigots all Hate along. Hate to say it, but that's what I, I think feel. would be a big move. Yeah, it doesn't say anything nice. That's <laughs> no. for sure. Doesn't really no, paint no. a good picture of those people. No, I think I think it was I think Hallmark stars were divided. Well, like the big I'm talking about the yeah. big name stars of like the Hallmark brand mm-hmm. were divided into the people that had a paycheck and and didn't mind you know the 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 agenda they were pushing, and then the people which are still not good, I want to say. But the, and then there's the people who were gung-ho Republican, Fox Mm. News drank the Kool-Aid, like down Christian values. And they followed the money to where they don't check that status. So, Perfectly yeah. put. Now, yeah. in a recent mm-hmm. statement to Vulture, a GAC spokesperson said their only focus is on quality. So that means not high volume like Hallmark. <laughs> and that might be an admittedly delicious mm-hmm. dig at Hallmark. We'll take that. Now, they also said there is no underlying message. Sure, Jen. When Vulture directly asked if they might ever feature okay. a queer lead or a different cultural holiday such as Hanukkah or Kwanzaa, the spokesman declined to give an on-the-record answer, naturally. <laughs> so no. No. So no, the answer so is no. no. Is the answer to that question. <laughs> oh, shut up. When Bill dies, maybe, is the answer to that question. So now, aside from the lack of diversity on a platform that could actually really make a difference if they did opt to do it because they have such a big audience base, what really saddens me is the way Hallmark has triggered a very insidious pattern. Terrible romances. Netflix has easily followed in their footsteps, <laughs> which, with as we discussed earlier, Vanessa Hudgens' Princess Switch Holly trilogy. Although, just Justice for Sneaker Night. I don't know oh, if anyone yeah. remembers that great song, but there you go. Oh my God. Of course. Basically, what we're going to do is dance. Basically, yeah, what basically, we're going to do is basically. dance. Oh my God. I'm obsessed with Vanessa Hutchins' <laughs> like, post sex tape nude league musical career. You and me both. Uh, well, this is the interesting thing. Speaking of which, so after both of those things and after she made that a little strange statement about COVID, Netflix sort of revived her and cleaned her up a little. So that's what Mm -hmm. these all seem to do. And it's not just Netflix and Hallmark. It's also Lifetime, which we've touched on. Mm -hmm. And the goal has become Hallmark's love of high volume, low quality, bland, shitty content. Now, I do eat it all up, though. Yum, yum, yum. (laughs) And um, at the same time, though, I do miss the time when Hollywood actually made some pretty fucking solid holiday romances. And I want to know what happened to that. But my question for you guys is twofold. What are some of your favorite holiday romances outside of these nasty-ass machines? But then also, are we hypocrites because we still consume it all? That is a longer conversation, for sure. Yeah, I'll answer the second part of that question first with a simple yes, I guess. Oh, yeah, I think we're hypocrites, for sure. Yeah, I'm fi- we I'm are. Fine, we I'm are. fine to welcome that criticism because we mm-hmm. do spend, when we, we literally, we, the way that uh, How Did This Get Made watches bad movies and doesn't necessarily, like, hurrah, bad movies. Like, we do spend a lot of our time smoking weed, making fun of these films, and shit-talking their efforts. Yeah, we might not be glorifying the content, but we're 
consuming it. We're, we're participating in it. Absolutely. I would probably yeah. call myself a hypocrite. Yeah. But that being said, favorite Christmas movie. I love Last Holiday starring Queen so Latifah. Good. It is so my good. favorite. Oh, no, wait. I'm thinking of a different thing. I'm thinking of the, the holiday with Cameron. Oh, I love Last Holiday. Oh, no, no, no. I want to be so clear. We're not talking about the holiday with okay, Cameron great, Diaz. I was like, Different Jack movie. Black trying to be a love interest. It's just not great. I thought he was kind of sweet. Jack Black as Kate Winslet's by. But well, all- that doesn't make sense. He's also such an asshole. He spends the whole time cheating on his girlfriend, like emotionally with Kate Piece Winslet. And then his girlfriend cheats on him. Right? And he's like, how dare yeah. you? Terrible movie. Terrible movie. Right? However, that's uh, Last Holiday, starring Queen Latifah as like a badass finding out that she's going to die blowing her money at a Swiss chalet. Mm. Give it to mm-hmm. me every weekend. Not that the is restaurant. Like, uh, not the restaurant. The fancy oh place God. for vacation. I didn't even hear it. I didn't even A Swiss <laughs> ski chalet. Oh, it's so good. And with, um, oh my God, there's so many great actors in it. That, oh my God. I can't believe I'm blanking on his name, but from- Well, LL Cool J. LL Cool J is the wonderfully charming love interest and he's amazing. Oh my oh, God. Yes. LL Cool J. Oh, honestly, just uh, Queen Latifah as a romantic lead is something we need more of and it's a crime we don't have more mm-hmm. of it. And it's- it is such mm. a fucking underrated movie. Such a charismatic leading woman. Giancarlo Esposito of Breaking Bad oh, yeah. and Far Cry fame. Like, he's in it too. Great. Anyways, that is my favorite holiday movie. Last Holiday, Queen Latifah. Uh, give it to me all the time. I'm going to throw the family stone into the ring because I just fucking love it. And I watch it with my family every year. And I could watch it outside of Christmas. I know Sarah disagrees with me. But I also just love the cast. Is that the one where she's dating the brother, but then she falls in love with the other brother? And he brother? falls in love with her sister. It's messy. If it happened cool. in real life, it would be horrendous. <laughs> yeah, that's just, like family listen. trauma. But cool. <laughs> Diane Keaton, Craig T. Nelson. It's a great cast. Yes, it is. I mean, great oh, cast. Great yeah, cast. Can't Diane argue. Keaton. Oh my god. No, and it's it's cozy, right? Like the the set design's really great. The costuming, mm. like I mm. I want to hang out in that setting. I just am yeah. very upset with the way they treat Sarah Jessica Parker. But I do rewatch Fair. it every year. Like she that- gets Luke Wilson <laughs> in the end, though. That's true. And if we're talking about we're talking about a gold prize, that's Luke Wilson. <laughs> Hollywood, I love Luke Wilson. Hollywood hunk Luke Wilson. <laughs> he's, uh, he's fine. I, I personally no, no, no. justice for Luke Wilson. Okay. Can I can I say something? He's Wes Anderson cute. Yeah. In a Wes Anderson movie. I'm like absolutely. But he's nice to her, unlike her ex. Unlike the other dude, he is actually Dermot like Dermot Mulroney, who's horrible to her. Luke Wilson is cute mm. and actually like not it's a dick. So basic and human decency wins. goes a long way with men in <laughs> Christmas movies. Pretty much. Yes. The bar is yeah. low. Guys, now instead of our usual segment, I think this very special holiday episode calls for something a little bit different and a lot more fun. I and Sarah would like to see uh, MK and Rachel do what the both of you do best and carry us to the end with a little bit of delicious Hallmark holiday movie improv. I would like to laugh. Sarah <laughs> would like to cry. Will you please <laughs> give us that gift of Christmas and true family values? We beg you. We love it. Let's yes. do it. Let's dive of right course. in. Of course. Let's do it. Let's see. Give us maybe a, a, a title of a Christmas yeah. movie. Suggestion from the oh. audience. Uh, give us a, a Christmas movie title that you've heard before. Or or, or that you, you're making up right now. Just start saying and words. We'll, <laughs> we're not making up at all on this one. Did you say the and Christmas, Christmas purse? purse? Yeah, the Christmas purse. And not a oh, purse. I thought you said curse. And I was like, Ooh, that would also spooky. be interesting. You could do that purse. too. Whatever you want to improv. Can on. we do that? Let's do that. The Christmas curse. <laughs> and can I make one tiny request? Can I make yeah. one t- MK, I would love to hear that accent again. <laughs> oh gosh. Out. I don't know even what, but you know, uh, hopefully it'll come. Okay. <laughs> Just do I what have comes a- natural. <laughs> I have an idea. Um, Great. Inter- so is it curse or per? You know what? I'm doing both. Doesn't Either matter. way, whatever works for the you. Cur- We're doing purse. both. The cursed Great. Christmas purse. The cursed purse. All right, here we go. Ah, oh, it's it's me, Noel, and I'm back in Sleepy Town, Snowville, with my dead. Oh, what? Where- is that my Watch dead mom? Watch out! Oh no! Ru- runaway candy cane cart. Whoa. Ooh, sorry. 
I I know I've bumped into you. Well, that was rude. I naturally have a distaste for you already. Well, I have a distaste for you. I'm not a fan of big city people, and I know you're one of those because I don't know you. (laughs) That's true. Everyone in this town does know each other, but I grew up here. I came back because my dead mom died, and here I am to to with my I, I with my briefcase and my blouse, and I'm just here. To check on her, my dead mom's dead house. So, is is this your dumb candy cane cart that I think is stupid? Yes, this candy cane cart is 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 only kept alive because of your dead mom's uh, affinity for candy canes. Oh my god! Wow, this was her candy cane cart that you now work at. Yes, she was our greatest supporter. Wow. Why can't you be more like your dead, dying, dead mom? Good point. And love Christmas and Christmas candy canes. Good point. I think I'm in love with you now. Um, I'm, hey. I'm glad we've made this Marry right. me. Hey, you know what? Only at the end. And first you have to take me um, ice skating, getting hot cocoa, and then to the Christmas ball. For sure. I hope you don't mind that my daughter from my, uh, from my widowed wife joins us on our ice skating adventure. Only if her mom's dead, too. She's definitely dead. All the moms are dead. All the moms are dead. (laughs) Thank God. Then I'd love to meet your perfect, precocious child played by Lori Lachlan's daughter. I know that we've only known each other for about 10 seconds, mm-hmm. but I think you'd make a great second mom for her. <laughs> Amazing. I, I have a lot of natural maternal skills because I'm a woman <laughs> and that's all I bring to the table. So I'm going to quit mm. my high powered job and move here to Snowyville and work um, at your candy cane cart. That was also my dead mom's candy cane cart. Great. I think that makes uh, some good financial sense. Good. <laughs> uh, do you want to have one very dry kiss? quick dry kiss? Really yeah. quick dry kiss. Okay. Mwah. Yeah, in front of my in daughter. In front of her daughter, of course. Her daughter, her, your daughter needs to be exposed to this early, 100%. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Mwah. Yay. And Great. it snows and there's Titles an aer- roll. And there's an aerial and there's shot. An of aerial the font. City. Yep. <laughs> oh my God, guys. Round of applause. Round of applause. <laughs> I have tears in my eyes effectively from laughing. Also, <laughs> so I realized, cool. like, oh, we did not mention the purse or a curse. I See, whatever. Yeah, I don't care. mean anything <laughs> in these movies. Doesn't so matter. It means fine. nothing. It means, it means nothing. The movie itself is a curse. That's yeah. the Hallmark movie. It's a curse. So you remember, yeah. remember a shoe addict's Christmas? That wasn't a, even yeah, about true. shoes. That was a real Hallmark yeah, movie that had, just did not touch on shoes. No, they mentioned shoes like three times and they're like, this is strong enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, now it's about God. That was excellent. That was so good. And oh. I could picture the dry kiss in my head and I saw but, it in Hamilton. Mm. It was just stunning. Oh, I want that really. Yeah. Even that sounds too wet, Rachel. Yeah. That was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not yeah, chased enough. Not yeah. chased enough. <laughs> Joe, if we could edit yeah. that last minute. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, and on that hilarious note, we've reached the end of this episode. We would love to thank you, Rachel and MK, for dropping by mm. and taking all things Hallmark and messy with us. You guys were fucking hilarious. Oh, thanks for having now, us. This was so fun. Of course. Yeah, thank, oh, thank you, you for coming. You were so... Oh. Mm. This is great, and you're so well-informed. I feel like I learned. Yeah. Okay, well, tell us where our listeners can find you and your show or whatever else you've got going on. Uh, Sure. So you can find us uh, at High Hallmark on Instagram or High Hallmark or Comedians Getting High and Watching Hallmark Movies on Facebook. We post about all our live shows. Our next one is, this might be coming out after that, but our next one is December 8th at uh, Comedy Bar. And our guest, Chris Siddiqui, who is a wonderful Canadian comedian. Um... You can also follow me on Instagram at, at rmancella, and I do shows at Comedy Bar and SoCap the- Social Capital Theater around Toronto uh, more than I probably should. So anytime, come on by and yeah, MK, go for it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm at MK underscore Morris on Instagram. Um, and I, yeah, other than High Hallmark, I have... Um, a stand-up show that I produce called Gloss, um, a variety talk show called MK's Living Room, and um, other than, yeah, just other sketch and, and improv and stuff around the city. So just go to Comedy Bar or SoCap and 
Maybe I'll see ya. Guys, follow them on all of the things. Go see them perform. And if you want to hear more from me, you can find me on Twitter at underscore Sadaf Hassan. Sarah, where can our listeners find you? Listeners can find me at Sarah Sahagian. And if you liked this podcast, please rate, review, and subscribe so other listeners can find us. Thanks for listening. Happy holidays. And thanks once again to our fabulous guests. Woo! Yay! Round of applause. Thank you. 